A high-profile conservative and possible presidential hopeful is getting pushback in his campaign to cut funding for Obamacare. Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas was heckled at a town hall meeting in his home state yesterday. Take a listen. There is a new paradigm. Gentlemen, thank you for sharing your views. You know, part of the First Amendment is about respecting the views of others. Sir, Cruz's supporters at that meeting outnumbered his opponents, and they applauded his effort to defund the president's signature health care law, even if it leads to a government shutdown. I have publicly committed, along with a number of other senators, that under no circumstances will I vote for any continuing resolution that funds even one penny of Obamacare. Let's bring in prominent conservative commentator Bill Crystal, the editor of the Weekly Standard. Mr. Crystal, good to see you as always. Thanks good for being here. Do you think that this uh, crusade by Cruz is, is destined to fail? I think it will not be possible to defund all of Obamacare uh, on September 30th. I don't think it's impossible to delay key parts of Obamacare. And my advice, not that Ted has necessarily asked for it, would be start off by trying to defund it all fine, but have a, have, a sec, have a plan B. And I think going after the individual mandate, the president himself suspended the employer mandate, as you know. Why not suspend the individual mandate as well? These exchanges have huge privacy and security problems and other problems. Why not suspend them? So I think it would be... A, a more rifle shot approach might be, might be better. But Ted Cruz is doing fine for now. Uh, certainly conservatives are excited about his call to defund all of Obamacare. I, was, I interviewed uh, Governor Rick Scott, Republican of Florida, on my show earlier today. And he said uh, that there should be any, that any move to repeal Obamacare should be accompanied by a move with something to replace it. But I don't hear Republicans calling for the repeal of Obamacare to talk about all the uninsured people who are covered by Obamacare or will be covered by Obamacare, what happens to them? Don't you think that's important? Yes, the Republicans have paid a price for the failure to aggressively push their own replacement for Obamacare. There are good conservative reform ideas out there. Um, but for now, look, I think delay, the great advantage of delaying Obamacare, just delay the damage it'll do. But you do then have to move ahead with a replacement. And I do believe uh, that Paul Ryan and others, and I think Bobby Jindal's involved in this, there's a, an effort going across the Senate, the House, and the governors, actually, to come up with a big replacement package, a little bigger than the ones that they've introduced so far in Congress that I think will be unveiled early next year. So maybe I wasn't supposed to know that, but I happen you to know that. know that. And this is a news network, so why not say it? Now, I, I think so. It. I think I think Republicans will be in better position in that respect. It's a good talking point for the Democrats now, oh, what would you do? But hey, for now, can't we just delay the imposition of something that is going to cause damage? I think that's a pretty easy case for Republicans to make over the next few months. But they do need by 24, you know, by the time we get into the serious election season in 2014, and certainly by the time a presidential candidate runs to have a serious, really serious and thought through replacement and conservative reform agenda on health care. I want to get your reaction to a, another soundbite uh, from a different Republican who was at the town hall, former South Carolina Senator uh, Jim DeMint. When you have someone with the courage of a Ted Cruz to stand up and say, we promised to defund Obamacare, that's what we should do. Every Republican up there made the same promise when they ran for the House or the Senate. But something's wrong and they don't have the courage that they seem to need. But you can change things. Do you think the reluctance of the Republican Party, at least in the Senate, and some of the establishment Republicans in this town and throughout the country to embrace the movement to defund Obamacare, even with this government shutdown risk. Is that an issue of courage or, or is there something else factored in? No, I think it's an issue of tactics and judgment. The establishment Republicans are a little bit too cautious and timid some of the time, maybe much of the time. The activist militant Republicans are a little bit too maybe go a little too bold sometimes and think you can go further than you can. I think the truth is somewhere in between. I don't think it's a bad debate to have, but I don't think either side, I think the establishment is unfair to the activists when they say they're just totally insane, irresponsible people. The idea of delaying Obamacare is a good idea. I think Jim DeMint's unfair to a lot of senators and congressmen when he says it's a lack of courage. You think it's tactics. One last thing before I let you go. You said this week that Sarah Palin could resurrect or rehabilitate uh, herself with a 2014 Senate bid 
in Alaska. So you, you do believe she has a political future, potentially? Well, I was asked, how could she have a political how could future? She? And I think the way she would do it is to run for office. And you know, if you run for office and win, if she were to defeat, win a tough Republican primary and defeat an incumbent Democrat, she'd be a freshman senator. She could join Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and Marco Rubio and Kelly Ayotte. And it would be a much more fun bunch of Republican senators than it was five years ago before any of them was in the Senate. You know, I spoke to the Republican National Committee this last week, and they were pretty upbeat, contrary to all the media uh, coverage. Republicans are in terrible shape. And one committee man said to me, look at who we've got in the Senate. Look at Ayotte and Rubio and Cruz and Mike Lee and Tim Scott. Look at the House members, Paul Ryan, Tom Cotton, uh, lots of others, Martha Roby. Look at the governors, Christy Jindal, uh, Scott Walker. These are all people. What, in their 40s? I think almost everyone I've mentioned in their 40s. Good bench, you think? Pretty, yeah, not just a good bench, it's a good starting team. All right, Bill Crystal, thank you so much. We appreciate your coming, up, your coming here. Coming up, Bradley Manning sentenced for the biggest military leak of classified information in U.S. history, and he finally says why he did it.